you've probably already seen some of the cool things you can do with WLED, from awesome effects to automations. So this video should help get you started with running your own WLED lights. I also have another video on some of the more advanced features of WLED if you find this one too basic or if you want to learn more after watching this video. So with that out of the way, let's get started setting up our lights. The first thing you'll need is your WLED controller. There are two popular options, the easiest being a Node MCU. The advantage of a Node MCU is that you don't have to solder any wires. However, it is going to be a bit more expensive than our other option, a D1 Mini, but not by much. The biggest advantage of a D1 Mini is how small it is. Both the Node MCU and the D1 Mini use what's called an ESP8266. So the procedure is pretty much the same, but I'll show you both options so you can decide for yourself. First, take your controller and connect it to your computer with a micro USB cable. Then we will download ESP Home Flasher. I recommend installing the 1.2 version since that's the one I had the most success with. Also, anyone using the M1 base max, I wish you the best of luck since I wasn't able to get any version working on mine, but it works fine on my Intel Mac and my Windows based computer. Next, we will download the newest WLED release. I'm going to download the ESP8266 underscore one M version because this works with both the Node MCU and the D1 Mini and allows for over the air updates rather than having to connect the controller back to the computer anytime I want to install the newest update. Then open ESP Home Flasher. You may have to allow it in your security settings. Then make sure it is seeing your controller. You should see a blue light on your controller if it is connected properly. If it isn't, you may need to press the reset button on your controller or you may need a different micro USB cable. Locate your WLED download and press flash ESP. It may take about two minutes and you'll know it's done when you see flashing is complete. Then connect your computer to the Wi-Fi network WLED-AP. The password is WLED1234. A window will then pop up. If not, open your browser and go to WLED.me. Now we're going to the Wi-Fi settings and we're gonna add in our Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi password. I recommend changing the MDNS address. This is where you will go if you want to control your WLED from your web browser. So I'm going to change mine to WLED-Kitchen-Write.Local. I also recommend changing the AP name to something you can remember, because if your WLED controller can't connect to the Wi-Fi network, it will broadcast its own Wi-Fi network. And if you have 10 networks all named WLED-AP, it may be hard to figure out which one is which. I also select Disable Sleep, but this is totally optional and honestly not recommended. When you press save, your WLED controller will then connect to your Wi-Fi network. From here on out, I recommend using the WLED app to make any further changes on your device, but you can also connect to the WLED through your web browser. Press the plus icon. It will then search for your new WLED controller. Once it finds it, press the check mark. Next, let's prep our LEDs. On these LEDs, the red wire is the positive wire, the white wire is the ground wire, and the green wire is for data. Data is what your controller will send to your LEDs to tell them what to do. So let's connect our data wire to the D4 pin of our microcontroller. Next, we need a power supply. For my setup, I'm gonna use two of these LED strips off of one power supply. And these LEDs use five volts, 90 watts each. So I'm gonna use a five volt, 300 watt power supply. Remember to always match your voltage and try to go over on watts. I have a more simple setup using one strip, so I'll show you that one in a second. Start by connecting the ground from your LEDs and your microcontroller to the ground of the power supply. They have to share a common ground or they won't work properly, even if you aren't powering your controller from the same power supply. Then connect your power cable from your LED to the power supply. 
Now, if you're using a smaller setup, you can use a power supply like this. This one is rated for 75 watts. So I can either cut my lights to a shorter length or I can actually set up a power limit in the WLED app. This power supply has a barrel type connector. I also soldered a short cable for the five volt input, the ground and the D4 pin on the D1 mini. And then I'll connect the five volt wire for the controller and the positive end for the LEDs to the positive end of the power connector. And then I'll connect the ground for the controller and the negative end for the LEDs to the negative end of the power supply. Once you connect your power supply to an outlet, only a few LEDs should turn on. Let's go back to the WLED app and go to the config section. Let's change the LED count to 300. I also disable brightness limiter because I am powering my LEDs from a power supply that I know can handle these lights at full brightness. But for my smaller power supply, I'm gonna keep the brightness limiter checked to make sure I don't draw too much power. And since my LEDs are RGBW LEDs, I'm gonna select the four channel LEDs. And I know these also work best when I select accurate. You can double check your LEDs by turning the brightness down low and making sure when you are on white light that only the white light LED is on. Now this next step is really important and may take some playing around with for you to figure out which works for your LEDs, but we need to make sure our color order is correct. I'm gonna select BGR just to show you what happens when it's wrong. Press save and I'll go back to this light. When I press red, it is now blue. And when I press blue, it is now green. I already know for this light, the color order is supposed to be GRB. And when I select that, now my lights are the proper color when selected. We'll come back to these settings later to talk about your different options. But first, I recommend unspooling all of your lights and testing them with white light as bright as you will want them for about 30 minutes. And just check to make sure that your power supply and your controller don't get too hot. For my setup, I'm gonna remove these two extra cables since I don't need them. And since I'm installing mine under my cabinets, I'm gonna use this aluminum channel. This helps to angle the lights at 45 degrees rather than straight down, and it also has a diffuser to help spread the light. Once your LEDs are installed, connect your power supply and your controller. Now I recommend connecting your controller as close as you can to your LEDs. If not, you may need to add a single LED to act as a signal booster. And in the WLED app, you can select skip first pixel but that's all a bit too advanced for this video, so we're gonna go ahead and skip that part. I also like to put my controller in a project box, and this is where the D1 Mini is easier, because you can use a smaller project box, but you can always leave it out in the open or put it in a Tupperware container or something like that. And now through the WLED app, you should be able to turn on all your lights and turn on all sorts of effects. But if you're like me, you don't always wanna turn your lights on through your phone. So I'm gonna show you how to connect your lights to a light switch in another video, as well as go over some of the advanced features of WLED. So be sure to check out that video if you want more information or check out the written guide if this video went too fast. But with that said, I'll see you in the next one.